Yo, good morning. Here in uh, Thailand, I'm Jay Beershank. This is another edition of Book Reviews. Thank you for joining me here. I'm at my friend's house. This is the first book review uh, abroad, so it's pretty exciting. And it's an amazing book, too. Today, we're going to be reviewing The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This is the Richard Peaver and Larissa Valorensky uh, translation. This is the translation that I read uh, the Brothers Karamazov from, and I begin to think that the they are the best translators um, for Dostoevsky. I tried to read the book um, The Possessed by a different translation, and it wasn't nearly as good. So, basically, this is one of the most beautiful books I'd read because um, the whole point of this book is to try to portray someone that is not tainted in any way by anything superimposed upon them by society, which is a really, really, really beautiful idea when you get to thinking about it because it's what everybody is trying to obtain through the, some kind of a spiritual path or a religious path or, you know, trying to minimize all these things people try to do to try to become one with their heart or one with their soul or free of their chaotic mind or whatever. The prince in this book, or the idiot, he is, he is already like that. He has, he's, has developed a mindset that has maintained all the way to about 30 that is completely pure. It's noble and righteous and pure. And he's an amazing guy. And um, he's portrayed as an idiot because with that nobility and with that righteousness, he doesn't have an integrated shadow, really. You know, he's very vulnerable to an act of evil or an act of malevolence. Like, he doesn't realize or understand. Well, he does understand. He's very smart. He's a very wise young man. He's not very educated. He's not, you know, he's never been to a university in the sense of, like, um, knowledge of history and knowledge of mathematics and knowledge of those kind of things. But he's very wise as far as psychology and understanding the, how humans' minds work. But he would rather turn a blind eye to all of the negative aspects of humans and just see the pure, basically the human side of every human, which is a really, really, really crazy kind of profound thing because the fact that he gets taken advantage of and ends up in so many bad positions and is viewed as such an idiot by so many people in this book, it really makes you think about um, what society's foundation is and what we strive for and why we strive for it, it really starts to become like we're the idiots and not him because he's just trying to be a good guy and accept people and love them and be cordial and see, you know, the human side of people and understand that inherently people are pure and inherently people would have no bad intentions you know it's only if they're desperate or if they're jealous or these like chaotic mind aspects come into play it's when people start to have these you know um conniving and malevolent um tendencies and it was just such a beautiful book and i was rooting for the prince the whole time because in my opinion they, you know like i said in the beginning everyone who embarks upon a spiritual journey is in some way or another trying to get back to this state that the prince is in and always is in and um you know it was just so nice to read about that because i feel like in my heart a lot of things that i try to do come from the same place as him but obviously i'm not quite as pure because I've done things in my life that have been much more insidious than I think the prince has ever done so I much I have a little bit more of that shadow that we're talking about I don't know if it's integrated but I at least have you know I have manifestations of it that appear in my character because I'm not so I'm not so pure but it was really nice to read about it because it was like gosh this is what everyone is really striving for I, I felt like and there was another beautiful part of like aspect to this book where it was like the prince you know when he would look into the eyes of children and he when he would interact with children it was so easy for him to be able to you know develop deep meaningful relationships with them really quickly because there was an uh, like a dichotomy of the book like children are the farthest thing away from insanity like children are pure and um, sane and, and respectful and responsible and you know righteous and noble and and as you grow up you get farther down this insanity level where you're you know striving for the wrong things and you're misunderstanding the 
purpose of being alive and you're just being superimposed upon you all these things about right and wrong and what you should do what you shouldn't do and especially now this book was written 200 years ago think about now I mean we're superimposed by so many ideas of what is really right and wrong with like you know what we should do financially what we should do with our family what we should do with ourselves how we should look how we should take care of ourselves where we should live how we should, all this stuff is superimposed on us so strongly so strongly and with the children they were on the complete other end of the spectrum where they are not superimposed by anything yet because they're completely unjaded they're completely pure and righteous and it was so beautiful to um, have that dichotomy because I love children and I interact with children a lot in a similar way as the prince and it was such a beautiful way to understand children and hear that kind of that was never really spoken through the book but many times when adults in the book were acting just freaking crazy um, the prince would console them by like treating them like a child like rubbing their hair or patting their face you know the people would be just in a in a rage and doing just all these convulsions and going crazy and the prince would just console them like a child and I thought in my mind that was like when the insanity of being an adult or being grown up into a, a society that is superimposing upon you insanity then when that is just too much you revert back to being a child and that's when you get comforted by someone who is pure and someone who really has good intentions not someone who is g good or the best by society standards and I just loved that idea I thought it was brilliant simply brilliant and um, so that's like my idea of the you know themes of the story but as far as the writing guys Dostoevsky is a master if you've never read any Dostoevsky well I've reviewed most of his books here on my book review channel so check that out because his writing is just it is immaculate it is stunning and there's nothing like it that I've ever seen in my life the character development and the way that he can penetrate into the social situations and use characters and use character interactions to expose this like ephemeral truth that you would have never been able to express on your own or conceive in your own mind it's just mind-boggling so that part of this book is amazing because the prince as he interacts with these different types of people it exposes very many fallacies and in the prince's way of thinking but that's only from society's perspective but when you see the prince interact with these people and it exposes the fallacies within their ways of thinking it's really interesting because those archetypes are hyper real if you will those archetypes are everywhere so being able to have those archetypes exposed fallaciously through the interactions with a pure soul like the prince is really 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 cool and fun um, the situation that the prince the last hundred pages of this book gosh it was heart-wrenching for me. It was so heart-wrenching because it just goes so south. So, you know, you don't really know how it's going to go and you know, you can kind of think maybe it might turn out well. Things could go grow. Well, I don't mean to break the plot for you, but you know, it's just it's so sad to me. I just finished the book and it just was really like, god darn it. Like I really wanted things to work out for this beautiful man, but it didn't work out very well for him, which is a real pity. One of my favorite all-time parts of this book is when Nat Natia Filipoleonia and Aglaia are talking. That's like maybe like 50 pages from the end of the book. That's one of the best parts of this book and um, I highly recommend reading the whole book just to get to the part where these two women sit down and talk to each other with the prince looking at them and watching them. It's one of the most amazing parts of this book. And also when the prince's friend Evgeny, I think his name, describes to the prince why the prince has been doing all these things for the whole book it is like like he uses his intellect to pierce through the the prince's purity and it makes the prince's purity look like some childish kind of um obsession with uh good instead of evil and it was really like oh wow that's crazy um I'd highly recommend this book guys, 10 out of 10. Um, I'd recommend any Dostoevsky book, 10 out of 10. This is simply amazing. And it's not, you know, sure it's entertaining, but this stuff is hyper real. Like it is so important to read because it'll just give you perspectives on people and things and relationships in life that you could have never ever manifested by yourself or explained in the beautiful, eloquent way that Dostoevsky does. So that's my review. It's the idiot. Theodore Dostoevsky, beautiful book. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Love you guys. Take it easy. Peace out from Thailand.